you, you were approached by Barbara Castle, then a very prominent Labour MP in the 1980s, I presume, and 84, yeah. 1984, and she gave you documents and asked you to look into their contents. That's right, yes. She was, um, I, I was editor of the local paper there. Um, I knew Barbara from several years before, and, you know, gradually she came to me and said, you know, I don't suppose you'd be interested in this and started to feed me some information and bring in some, some documents. And, you know, it was quite explosive, really, in terms of what she was showing me here, um, that there was a, you know, a, a paedophile ring uh, operating within uh, the, the powers of Westminster, and that many of the members were actively supporting the, the PI network, the paedophile information exchange network. Um, and I find it quite amazing. And she, she gradually came in with more and more papers. Do, do we know where she was getting the documents from? Though? Yeah, she got contact within the House, and uh, they were feeding information to her. She'd obviously been an MP for donkey's years, yeah. really, but had sort of left there, quit, and, and gone as a Euro MP. But she still kept in touch with them, and a lot of her contacts were feeding her really you know, serious information here about people that were meddling in, in the Pi network. And the aim, really, was to try and get a, enough support within Westminster to make it uh, legal to have sex with children. And she was absolutely appalled by this and wanted to uh, obviously put a stop to it. And the dossier that Geoffrey Dickinson had given to Leon Britton, do you think that that examined similar territory? Do you think some of the stuff that Barbara Castle got her hands on may have been contained within that original dossier? I, I'm absolutely positive it would have done. I mean, she came to me probably about six months or so after the, uh, the Dickens right. report to come through. So I wasn't too clued up, to be, to be honest, about the Dickens thing, because it was all sort of fairly confidential in those days. Um, but she must have seen that. Um, she had an absolute wad of documents. She came in one day with uh, a briefcase, absolutely chocker with, with information, photographs and uh, all sorts of things. She gave me a limited amount of paperwork, which was enough to perhaps run a story and ask if I would do it. And I said, well, the only way I can do it is on the back of, uh, you, you know, in fact, you're doing it as the local uh, Euro MP. Yes. You're, you're instigating this, this uh, inquiry. And I think what she had mainly was intelligence about a second inquiry that maybe Lee and Britton uh, had instigated in terms of looking into the Dickens dossier. Because I think this, the timing was, was probably about right in terms of maybe six, six months, nine months after that had been uh, uh, registered. And so I think there was a second inquiry going on within Westminster to see who may have been involved in all this. And plenty of the paperwork she gave me involved... Uh, minutes of meetings, um, uh, copies of meetings, uh, people, French meetings, really, within Westminster, people who were supporting the Pi Network. There was a lot from the National Council of Civil Liberties and things that were involved as well. Um, but there were a number of people that were listed as actively promoting and supporting the Pi Network to actually provide speakers from the Pi Network at fringe meetings. And these politicians were named in, in these documents? Yeah, the, a lot of them were named. Uh, I mean, obviously, I cannot remember all the names sure. now, but there, was, there were two specific lists. One was a list of 16 active MPs and peers that were involved with this. Um, another was a list of about 30 people who were supporters. There were uh, mention of um, heads of private schools or the teachers or involved with scout groups and organizations okay. from the church and things like that that were, again, funding and actively supporting this. Um, and you know, various MPs were named in sort of, if you want to get a speaker finder, contact uh, Rhodes Boyston, for instance. He was... Uh, it's somehow involved with the distribution of the uh, Magpie magazine, which was the Pie uh, magazine. And there were copies of, of um, adverts that were flagged up here where they were openly uh, promoting open weekends at different public schools for boys and things. And different events, in, in mainly involving uh, children and boys, were flagged up as, as something that's worthy of, uh, of note. Um, there, was, there was an awful lot of uh, information in there um, it was too much information in a sense to run one story. It would have you know, probably went to saga. But Barbara had said to me she'd been to national newspapers and they weren't interested. They do wouldn't you, touch it with a barge pole. Do you know why? That. Did she say why? What reasons was she given? It was too sensitive. Good Lord. Um, they'd been frightened off. It was a massive document that I had. I had to try and put things together and get it into context. I didn't actually read every single thing that was given to me, but there was enough evidence there, information, uh, naming names, to contact the Home Office and to contact some of the, the key names mentioned to, just to get a response. Um, now, when I phoned the, the Home Office, um, it was obviously very different to what it is now. You were dealing with certain departments that were very aggressive to, to journalists. All they wanted to know, they refused to answer any questions, and they tried to turn it back on myself. They asked, well, who's given you this information? Where have you got it from? How have you got access to this information, etc., etc.? 
cetera. And it was very similar whenever I contacted any of the personalities involved with that. Eventually, um, I was told then by the, the liberal organisation that somebody would, would come and basically put me right. They would come and uh, talk to me about this. And Cyril Smith turned up the, the very next day on, on my doorstep. Uh, at home or at the office? Uh, at the office. So Cyril Smith, MP for Rochdale at the time, turns yeah. up personally yeah. on your doorstep as a direct result of questions you'd been asking about the contents of these dossiers. These That's files. right. And he was very, very aggressive. And I, I actually had interviewed him several times before. Um, I thought of him as, I mean, he was a bit of a renter quote, they used to say, in those days. <laughs> we all need those, Don. We all need those. We do. <laughs> um, and I was going with him very, very well before that. But within 10 seconds of him arriving, he went from Mr. Nice Guy to Mr. Nasty, was was really threatening and aggressive. Um, he was a big guy anyway, but he was really pointing fingers, banging on the desk and demanding I hand over all these papers to him. Well, there's no way I was going to do that. I was saying, you know, this is... Uh, started my inquiries and I wanted response to that. He refused to give a response, eventually stormed out. Um, the next thing I had was the following day, a um, special branch arrived with a gang of policemen. And they again wanted uh, or demanding access to the files, they wanted to take everything away, making all sorts of threats and saying, if, you know, if, was I prepared to hand them the files? And I was asking, well, what, for what reason? And that, they say, you know, that's for us to know. It is not in the public interest. It's a threat, potential threat to national security. You have to hand these files to us. Are you prepared to do so? If you don't, we'll arrest you on the spot and you could face two years in jail. Now, I was in possession here, uh, if, if you recall, of some very sensitive documents. Some of these have got actually not to be removed from the Home Office or for your eyes only, confidential documents. So I was banged to rights in that respect, whereas, you know, as a journalist, I got yeah. very sensitive uh, papers here. So you couldn't object to that. They've got a search warrant anyway. Uh, their officers uh, got all the files. I was asked to say, is this everything that's come forward? And I had to say yes, and they, they took them all away and disappeared. It's worth remembering that, that they would be a security risk. If the allegations within them were true, it would expose every single person mentioned to, to, to blackmail by, by foreign powers or by just about anybody. Everyone knew one this was going to be a, an absolute waste of time. Not Why do you fault. say that? Why do you say that? Because he was given um, Mission Impossible. He was given a brief that was impossible to follow. He was just really reviewing a review that had failed 12 months or more ago. And Do you think Theresa May was being cynical then when she appointed the chief executive of the NSPCC to, to, I, to I conduct do. that um, review of a review? I, I think he was just set up to fail on this. I don't think he had a, a hope in hell of trying to find these things. He, his, his directive was so narrow, he wasn't able to diversify. I mean, a lot of MPs have said that they seem quite amazed that... Um, Peter Wanless and his team have not contacted me or contacted other people who've, who've supplied uh, uh, vital information, I would say, about this, this report. I mean, initially, we're looking into the, the Dickens dossier. Yes. That's probably been fragmented over the years. But I do believe parts of that report do exist, and I think they're in various archives now, probably including Barbara's own archives. He's not really interviewed people like Liam Britton, who has now admitted having the Dickens report and passing it on to colleagues. What we want to know is who these colleagues were, what happened. Um, nobody can just walk into uh, Liam Britton's office and say, here, mate, here's, here's a file, you should read this. Yeah. It goes through a system in the Home Office. Liam Britton must have had a, a report back from his inquiry to say, this is what we recommend. It's something like you're getting now from the one that's report. But I think with Barbara Castle's um, uh, inquiries here, she's obviously rattled a few cages there. The Home Office have jumped about uh, and set the special branch onto me there to try and prevent this information getting out. But again, it's evidence, clear evidence, that there was some sort of second inquiry going on within six to nine months after the Dickens report that Barbara knew about. Do you feel that there is now an appetite to shine a light into the murkiest corners of this issue that, that, that you, one of the few people, have already glimpsed? I don't feel there's any appetite whatsoever, and no. I think it's getting harder now because you're six months away from a general election. I don't think people want to rock the boat, upset their own parties, and I think they're all worried about their own seats. So I think they'd rather sort of sit on the fence. And what I'm getting back from the MPs is this sort of feeling as well, the ones that have, have been in contact with me. They've also uh, spoken about se uh, senior uh, officials in the Home Office, uh, either current or retired, who, again, are worried about the Official Secrets Act being thrown at them, that they could lose the pensions, they could be exposed, and by mentioning certain names or certain parties, it could bring the whole thing into disrepute. They've not been given any assurance that if they talk to any committee or anybody else, that they will be given some sort of immunity. You spoke of the special branch in the 
1980s as the government protection unit. They were ruthless, they were law unto themselves, and they were working for the puppet masters. Their job was to protect the, the, the political integrity, if you like, of MPs and, and the parliament. Cyril Smith was uh, uh, accused of um, some offence in, in a toilet in, in the centre of, of Birmingham and also uh, found with a car boot full of child pornography right. in Northampton. And all these incidents were sort of swept under the carpet because of the intervention of Special Branch. This was how powerful they were. Everybody was scared to death of them. And they were there simply to protect the backs of the MPs. Now, none of this is reflected in any documents that I've seen of late, um, you know, with the Cold War, with their input, etc. Mm. And again, this, this fear factor is still there. Uh, I'm convinced that certain MPs are still in power uh, here. People who are still in, in, in around the, the area, Jack Straw, Neil Kinnock, um, are people that have had access to this information in the past, according to, to Barbara Castle. She's written to them. They've written back. It's Leland Britton as well. These are people that we need to bring into the, uh, the debate to find out what was actually said to them and what their knowledge of the information is now. 